Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today I'm here to bring you the official tutorial on the Jelly Roll Rug 2 pattern by RJ Designs. I got official permission from Roma from RJ Designs to do the official tutorial for this video. I'm so excited. We also did a video on the first Jelly Roll rug that you can watch. We'll put a link to it in the description below. This one is a lot easier because the stirrups are straight. So if you had trouble with your rug curling or not laying flat, this one is gonna be much easier to get it nice and straight and flat. A lot of the supplies are the same, so let's go over them here. As always, with the just like with the other video, there are a few steps that I'm not gonna show you because we want you to support the pattern designer and get your pattern. So the first thing you need to get is your Jelly Roll Rug 2 pattern. We have everything you need for this over at shop.quiltatersamus.com. I know these rolls are really hard to get, but we are ordering a lot of them. And so we usually have them in stock. And if we don't, you're able to back order them and then you get them in the order that you placed your order uh, when we get more. So, but we order a lot of these. They are usually in stock. This is the Bozal. I'm gonna say this wrong, Catahan batting on a roll. They're really awesome. They are already cut into two and a half inch strips so that you don't have to do that. Cause I know like whenever I do it, my batting always gets my cutting mat all fuzzy, but this is already pre-cut. It's in 25 yard rolls and you need two of them, one and two, in order to do your entire jelly roll to go with it. Obviously you need a strip roll. Now jelly roll is a copyrighted term by Moda. So this is from Clothworks. It is their American made brand solid. So this is not technically a jelly roll, but it is a two and a half inch strip roll and it has all the strips you need in it. Most of them come in 40 pieces and that's what you need for this pattern. I am using solid colors because this real like gray neutral is very trendy and hot right now. So I feel like this is gonna go in just about any home and that's modern and fun. And even though there's lots of repeated straight strips, I'm gonna create a fun design with that. And I'm gonna li list down in the description below and on our blog at quiltaddictsanomous.com, the order that I put my strips in. We've got more of these while they last. And so if you really like the way our rug turns out, you're gonna be able to do that as well. I'm also gonna make another one using the pastel colorway. I'm gonna do this one for my daughter because as soon as I finish my first one, one, she immediately asked for a rainbow one. So we're just gonna have two, that way you guys can see um, the way that it looks with different colorways. And then also she can have one for her room and we can have one for the shop and it'll be great. You need a spool of RFL thread. I'm gonna use the same thread that I used in the beginning for my neutral one. And that is color number 4670. You can see that a little bit better there. Um, this is really great because it is variegated. So the colors really kind of work no matter what it's on. It just really kind of blends away and it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go with that. Um, Roma rec has some recommendations on writing and I'm gonna let you read the pattern to figure out what those are. But I always use the friction gel pens whenever I'm writing on fabric because it shows up really well and then it goes away with your iron. So that's really helpful. You need a walking foot for this. Walking foot has this little claw attachment on it and a second set of feed dogs on the top. So what it does is this goes up and down when your sewing machine needle goes up and down and it will feed everything through nice and evenly through your sewing machine so that way you will have less trouble with getting everything together. You need a pair of scissors because unlike the other Jelly Roll rug, where your first step is to put all of these together, your first step is gonna be to put all these together in individual strips because this is a straight rug. So you have to cut your batting as you go. And I'm gonna use my machiner's quilting gloves for the whole thing. Whenever I do anything that's like quilting or binding related, basically anytime I need to use a walking foot, I always use these because they have little grips on the fingertips um, and that really helps you move the fabric through with less wrist and shoulder strain. So I use them a lot. I really love them. And you can see mine are a little dark on the tips. Um, they kind of take on whatever color of the fabric that you've been working on last, but it doesn't transfer to the next quilt. So I use these all the time. It's like one of my top 10 must have notions for sure. So that's what you need to get started. And if you wanna pre-wind a couple bobbins, four or five should do ya, and then we can get started. All right, so step one is to get into my strip roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this part off. 
And the really good thing about this is you get to decide how your strips go and lay out after you've already stuffed them with the batting. So I don't have to make any decisions right now. I can just start sewing everything together and stuffing it with the binding. So I'm gonna show you how this stuff works. It's really cool. And I did make another um, Jelly Roll rug, the traditional one, using my batting scraps. I've got a lot of them. And I've really found that this stuff works a lot better. The batting is really thin, like this. I mean, you can see it's about the length of my hand and I have small hands. And it's there's 25 yards around this roll. So it's super, super thin um, batting. And even though I use really thin, really high quality batting in my quilts, it just wasn't as thin as this stuff. And so it just didn't have the thighs flat. I didn't have as good a results. It just, I felt like my, I had to keep stopping to fuse it together. So if you can definitely get this stuff. I mean, it, look, it's so super thin, so, so thin. And so this is really great stuff. Your strips will lay really flat with it. So I'm gonna show you what to do with the camera being above before I go to the sewing machine. So that way you get a really good idea of how to stuff this fabric. And then we'll show it to you on the sewing machine as well. So what you do is you're gonna lay it wrong side up. There is no wrong side with this because it is a solid fabric. And then you're gonna layer your batting on top of that. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to fold everything to the inside, kind of like if you've ever made bias tape, but of course this is a straight of brain. So once you've got your ends met there, you can just fold them over on themselves. And so you're gonna have one end that has a nice single fold and one end that has the double fold. And your edges are concealed real nicely right in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sew down the center. Now some people have sewed like a quarter inch away from the edge and that's fine too. Then it kind of gets hidden with your stitches, but I kind of like having that center seam as another part of the element of the design. So I like sewing straight down the center like that. But if you're having problems where you're not catching all of these inner seams, then definitely set your sewing machine needle so that you're gonna be sewing closer to this double edge so that way you catch everything. All right, so now let's do that on the sewing machine and get going. All right, so I've got my pieces layered together and I'm just leaving everything on the roll. I'm just gonna kind of cut it as I go. So what I'm going to do here is exactly what we did before. I'm going to fold everything into the inside, both sides, and then I'm gonna fold it in. And I like to have it so that my double fold is to the left because then I can kind of slide my finger in between there and keep everything nice and tucked in as I'm going. That's just more comfortable for me. If you feel more comfortable tucking it in with your right hand, then just flip it over and do it that way. You also are gonna to wanna to use a jeans needle for this. You've got a lot of uh, layers that you're gonna be sewing through, so you need that really sturdy needle to get through them all nicely. All right, so I've got this strip lined up so that both of the edges of my feed dogs are over it and that will just ensure that it goes through real nice and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and get that started and then I just kind of stuff it as I go. So I only work with whatever will fit on my sewing machine table. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and fold those in and tuck it in. And I've got my extension table on today so I can get maybe like six inches or so. If you have binding clips, you could clip a bunch of them together and just do the whole strip, but I like to just kind of do it as I go. I find that that works for me. But once I fold it in, I just kind of run my finger through the centers to make sure everything's tucked in. And you can kind of like quality check your work as you're going by just paying attention to, you know, how wide your fabric is in relation to your feed dogs. Like for me, the feed dogs on the upper part of the walking foot are on exactly on the edges of those strips so that to me, as long as that always is the case, I know that my strips are always gonna be the same width. And once I get a little bit out of here, I do kind of guide it. I'm not pulling it um, because you, your walking foot will do that. You don't need to mess with it. But I just kind of give it, make sure it's going nice and straight. And once I've sewed down, I'll tuck some more in. And then I just kind of hold it in place with my hands until we get to the point where my fingers are now up near that sewing needle, and then just keep repeating that process.
All right, so I've gotten to the point where I'm at the very end of my strip. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to go ahead and give that a little snip so that it's even with the edge of my strip and that way I don't waste any of the batting. And I'm just going to tuck in these ends and sew right to the end. And then we're going to just feed another one in right after that and chain stitch these. So from now on, I'm just gonna kind of go down the strip roll in order. Again, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to make too many decisions at this point because you will arrange them in the order that you want once you have got all your strips prepared. The one thing you wanna do is you are gonna need to take two strips and set them to the side and that's gonna bind your raw edges on the sides when you're done. So I'm gonna take my two black ones. And the reason why I'm going with my really dark ones for my binding is because this is going to be on the floor. And so it's going to catch a lot of dirt. And so the darker you can have on the edge, the better it's going to be because then it's not going to show as much, you know, wear and tear over time. So, but if you've got like animals in your house, like my cat sheds white hair like crazy, maybe you want to go with a lighter one because then it won't pick up all the dust money. So it's totally your personal preference. This one's going to live at the shop. And so I'm going to go with the black because there is no animal hair at the shop. So just, you know, dirt and regular wear and tear from people walking. So I'm setting these aside. The rest of them, I'm just going to sew down. I'm going to go ahead and chain PCs. I'll show you how to do that. But then basically you just need to have a little, you know, Netflix marathon going, go ahead and sew all your strips together and then you'll be good to go. All right, so I've got my next strip. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it in in half so that my raw edges are meeting here in the center. Fold it over again. And again, I find it more comfortable to have the double fold side on the left. And then rather than break thread, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew right on to the next one. That way we can save some thread, we can chain piece these babies and we're good to go. So now to manage all these strips, I'm just gonna kind of make sure that they are, you know, on top of my table as I'm working and that way they're not all over the floor before I'm ready for them to be all over the floor. So I'm just gonna keep on sewing and you should too. Just go ahead and get all your strips prepared so that they all look like this. And you can see we've got just that real little bit of variegated thread in there, which shows up more in some places than others. But I've got my single fold edge and my double, and I just need to prep all my strips so that they look like this. So get sewing, turn on some Netflix, and just have some fun. Definitely, this is totally something you could have a glass of wine while doing. It is not heirloom sewing. It's gonna be on the rug on the floor. And it's fun, and it's a lot faster and easier than the original Jelly Roll rug. So I'm gonna sew, you go ahead and do that too. I've been sewing for about three hours and that's about how long it took me to get all of my strips sewn with the batting stuffed in it and then stitched right down the center to hold everything together. It was a really simple process and I found it a lot easier than having to stop and roll that coil ball all the time um, with the original Jelly Roll rug pattern. You do wanna make sure that everything is staying nice and straight as you're doing this so that way your rug is nice and straight and not kind of wonky when you're all done. But it's pretty easy up until this point. And what I'm doing now is I've laid everything out to sort of create stripes. So what I've done here is I did, there's usually two of any one color in a 
um, strip roll. And this one, there's four of each color. So what I did was I created a symmetrical pattern so that way I could have two of one color next to a light one. And I kind of alternated with my darker colors and then a light and then I just kept going in until the center is very light. And that way the outside of the rugs, which is going to take the most abuse as you know, dirt from their floor gets on it, is going to be okay because if it gets a little dirty and dark on the outside, not the end of the world because we used our darker fabrics out there. Um, I did use my black as my outside strip because I'm also going to use black on the sides for binding. Um, so I made sure to use the same fabrics there. Now, when I was laying out to decide what color I want, I just laid everything going in the same direction, meaning I've always have the um, side that has a single fold on one side and the double fold on the other. So all my double folds are going this way. That is not how you're gonna sew it together. This is one of the pieces that um, I've gotta keep a secret. So that way you have to get the pattern. So make sure you get the Jelly Roll Rug 2 pattern. They tell you how to orient those to sew them together into sets of two. So that way when your rug is finished, you have the nice single fold on the outside rather than the double fold, which looks a little bit, let's get a different color so you can actually see here. You can see the double fold looks a little bit unfinished, but the single fold side looks very nice. So make sure you refer to your Jelly Roll Rug 2 pattern so that way you can see how to sew your sets of two together. So that way you have the nice finished side on the outside when you're all done. Um, she also has some great tips, uh, Roma from RJ Designs, on how to keep everything in order once you've decided what it is. So. And I will tell you that that's the point where I'm gonna be using my friction gel pen. These are nice because you can mark on your fabric and then it will go away with an iron. If it ever gets in freezing temperatures, they will come back, but if you iron, it'll go away again. So I use this all the time and I'm definitely gonna use it to help keep everything in order according to the fabulous tip that is in the pattern. So again, just a quick reminder, you can get the pattern and everything else you need to make this over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. I'm also gonna start using my machiner's quilting gloves at this point. Those grips on the fingertips are really gonna help me as I push things together. Um, just to give you an idea, this is about how much I have left of my two Jelly Roll battings, or my Jelly Roll rug batting rolls. So you really do use almost all of it. So it's definitely worth getting. It makes everything go a lot faster and you can just be done and it's a consistent width and your strips are gonna look really nice. Especially with this one, where you're not gonna have that ease of going around, you're really gonna be able to tell if your strips are not the same width when they're all put together because they're gonna be very straight. And so it, that's really nice to have this where it's already all a nice consistent width. All right, so I'm gonna start sewing these into sets of two, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to make those twosies into foursies and two sets of eights and so on until you are done. So go ahead and sew everything into sets of two. You're going to use a zigzag stitch. I set my sewing machine so it is the widest stitch possible so that way I can really easily catch both of those sides. So I'm gonna sew those into twosies and then we'll be back when we are sewing our rug together. All right, so I've got everything sewn into sets of two and I've even sewn some of them into sets of four. Um, but one thing you have to do, it's pretty much impossible to get this rug to not lay flat, but you can get it to bend if you're not careful. So if you can see, this strip has a pretty serious bend in it. I need to straighten that out before I sew it together to make a set of four, otherwise it's never gonna be straight later. Now with some of the bends that weren't as serious, I was able to just kind of stretch the fabric in the other direction and straighten it out a little bit. And that already has helped quite a bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a press as well, just to sort of straighten that out just a little bit more before I sew them together. So I've just got a spray bottle filled with water. You can use Best Press or your favorite starch if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz that. And I got it pretty wet. And now I'm gonna go ahead and give it a press and keep it nice and straight.
then if you have a cutting mat like mine where there are actually our guidelines on it, you can use that to help keep it nice and straight just by lining up your edges with the marks on the board. All right, that is looking a heck of a lot better than it did before I straightened it out, so now I can sew these together. So when I sewed all of my sets of two together, I started from the left and worked to the right. So one really common tip when you're doing strip piecing, and this applies to that, is that you always work from the opposite direction to keep things nice and straight. So since I sewed all of these from the left, I'm now going to sew all of these to the right when I'm joining everything else from here on out. So when I'm joining them to sets of four, eight, 16, and so on, I'm always gonna sew from the right. So I set my sewing machine up to sew a zigzag stitch and I set it to be as wide as it possibly could be. I also, my machine will set it up so that way it will automatically reinforce the stitches at the beginning of each stitch and then also cut them automatically for me. So I go ahead and put those on too. That way it's just one less button to push when you get to the end of the strip. So it's gonna go ahead and start and reinforce those stitches so that way those ends don't come apart on me. Turn on the speed so you can hear me here. So I'm not really doing anything to push it through. I really am just holding my fingers on the sides to keep it going through nice and straight. Trying to keep it so that the center where those edges are coming together is in the center of my walking foot. If you get off a little, you can just kind of guide it right back in the spot you need to be. And I'm just letting the machine do the work. Like if I take my fingers off, it's still going through. I'm just literally just using those fingers as a guide to keep it nice and straight. So when you lay everything back out, just take care to make sure you're keeping it in the order that it should be and that you didn't introduce any wobblies in there. If your strip gets a little not straight, just make sure you press it and get it straight again before you sew anything back to each other. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing these into sets of four. It's at this point that I'm gonna put on some machiner's quilting gloves, not because I'm gonna be pushing the fabric through, but because it just helps me get a little bit better grip on the fabric to help hold it and guide it um, as it gets heavier from here on out. If your ends are uneven here, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. We're gonna trim everything off at the end. And if you're running into issues where you're having skip stitches, you should re-thread everything, your top thread and your bobbin, and if it continues, then change your needle. All right, so I'm down to two pieces for the Jelly Roll rug. So I'm gonna get those lined up and sewn together. And you basically, you're just gonna sew everything into sets of two and then all those in the sets of four and then into sets of eight and then you're ready to start joining your big rug together. I am keeping the smaller piece underneath my sewing machine. So I've got a little bit more room to work. This is bendable. You can kind of roll it underneath here but it's best if you can just keep the small part over there. When you get to this point, try to make sure you're not pushing it through or your stitches are going to look wider um, than they did otherwise. So you just kind of want to guide it and let the machine do the work. All right, we are almost done. We just need to square up our edge, add some binding and sew it down. We're gonna do it all by machine so it's really fast. So the first thing we need to do is we need to draw a line to create a stay stitch to keep all this together until we can get our binding on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my ruler so that any inch line is even with the top of your rug and it should extend all the way to the bottom and be nice and even. Once I've got that 
there and I have plenty of selvage hanging off the edge. This is the point where we're gonna cut all that off and even this up. I'm gonna take my friction gel pen and I'm just gonna mark up and down. So now I've got a nice line to follow and stitch on top of before we cut everything off. You're gonna repeat that process on the other side. This one you can see I was very uneven, um, but it's okay. We're gonna even it all up and it'll be just fine and we'll get it all trimmed up and nice. Now I'm gonna change my sewing machine so that the needle is in the center of my walking foot and with my machiner's quilting gloves on to help me grip the rug because it's getting pretty bulky at this point. I'm gonna sew a straight stitch right down that line that I drew on both sides. Now I'm gonna line up my ruler with the eighth of an inch hash mark, even with the line that I stitched down and drew on. And I'm gonna trim this to an eighth of inch seam allowance. Now you're gonna take the two strips that you set aside at the very beginning and you're gonna fold them in half just like you would for binding, but you're gonna do each separately because one's gonna go on one side and one's gonna go on the other. So just go ahead and fold those in half, hot dog style, meeting the edges and press down the side and do that for the entire strip and then twice. Now with the top side of your rug up, you're gonna lay your strip down, even with the edge, just like you would for quilt binding. You're gonna extend it beyond about an inch or so. We can trim it down later. You certainly don't need the whole strip. Then I'm gonna move it underneath my sewing machine. And I'm gonna start, the weight can be a little much at this point. It helps if you kind of fold the rest of the rug up and over onto the table so it's not dragging, but it's pretty heavy at this point. So with at least an inch hanging out past the edge of the rug for turning, I'm gonna go ahead and start and reinforce that stitch. And I've got it set to sew a quarter inch seam. So that way that stay stitch that we um, put in earlier is gonna be covered by the seam binding. And you're just gonna go ahead and stitch down the raw edges of your binding strip, even with the edges of the raw edge of your rug using a straight stitch. Now I'm gonna repeat with the other side, again, sewing it to the top of my rug, so that way when we flip it over to the back, it, it'll, both sides are gonna flip over to the same back. Always important. So now I'm gonna take some scissors and I'm going to trim this to about an inch beyond the edge of my rug. I'm gonna fold it over and then under. What I want is for all of these raw edges to be tucked in. So right now we're looking at it from the back. So I'm gonna flip that over and then I'm gonna manipulate it until all my little raw edges are tucked in there. And then I'm gonna put in a pin. You could also use binding clips if you have them, but they're not necessary. So I've got that to get it started. And then I'm not gonna worry about trimming or pinning the end in place just yet. I'm gonna do that when I come to it, but I am gonna go ahead and clip it so that it's one inch beyond the edge of the rug right now. Now I'm gonna set my sewing machine back to that zigzag stitch and I'm gonna get it as wide as I can so it matches the same stitch I use for everything else. Slide that edge under. I'm gonna reinforce those stitches just like I did when we started. I got it pretty secure there. Now I'm just gonna flip the edge under as I get to it. If you wanted to, you could pin this all in place first or use binding clips as well. 
And I normally am a person who just hates machine binding, but this is a rug. It's gonna be walked on. It's gonna to need to be really sturdy and everything else is zigzag together. So why not zigzag the binding edge as well? All right, I am about three inches or so away from the edge. So it's at this point that I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tuck this end underneath and I'm going to fold everything under and I'm gonna check it from the back to make sure that my edges are tucked underneath and they're not right now. I've got a big hunk hanging out. So now I've got it nice and tucked in there so that everything is underneath my binding. And rather than pin that, I'm just laying it right down on the table and then holding it in place with my fingertip. And that'll be enough to hang on to it. You certainly could pin if you wanted to. Make sure you reinforce that end really well so that that binding edge doesn't come off. Now we're gonna repeat on the other side. This is what it looks like from the other side. You can still see that zigzag stitch, but it covers very nicely. Well, this is it. I have finished my rug. I'm really excited about it. I really like how the variegated thread kind of added a dimension to the solid fabrics. It lays super, super flat, which is great and easy. So if you had problems getting it to lay flat with the original Jolly Roll rug pattern, pretty much impossible to screw up with this one. So check it out, you will enjoy it. Um, we have all the supplies you need to make this rug, including the fabric while it lasts, over at shop.quiltedexonomist.com. What I did was kind of create my own stripe patterning with those solid fabrics. So that way we're able to get, and the cat has already been laying all over this, this cat hair on it already. But we've got the gray and then a the little white stripe and then it gradually gets lighter. And I've sort of created my own stripes into the center. And then it repeats again as it comes back toward me. So it's a really modern looking rug. It'll go good in any home. And I really love how this turned out. But of course you can do it in lots of other colorways. And I have done another one. I also made a rainbow version using the American Made brand solids and the pastel collection. This one's gonna go in my daughter's room. I really like how this rainbow look turned out. In this case, I kind of alternated between and then they're opposite. So in here, we've got the purple, light pink, purple. And on this side, we've got light pink, purple, and light pink again. So it kind of alternates as it comes into the center and then heads back out again. So this will be really great in my daughter's room. She's four, she already loves it. And this one will be great for me because I really just love this neutral colorway. It's very trendy, it's very in right now. So you've got lots of great options that you can do with this. We've got the uh, strip rolls that go with both of this as well as all of the batting rolls, the pattern, and the jeans needles that you need to go with this. So I hope you give this a go. It was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this, please give it two thumbs up and link and subscribe. We release new videos each week on how to do something new and fun in quilting. Also a big thanks to Roma for letting me do the official video tutorial for this. I've had a lot of fun making these and I'm really excited to see them on my floor. And in an upcoming video, I'm gonna wash one of these and we're gonna see how it works because that is the number one question I get asked is what happens when they get washed? I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna film it and we're gonna see how it turns out. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks so much and happy quilting.